welcome to another vlog post for my blog Becoming Ordinary. I'm in beautiful Squamish, BC. I'm here to answer another question and this is a question that I've actually been thinking a lot about over the last couple of years. It's a difficult question. I'm going to try and tackle it quickly here and then in written form in my blog at some point as well. I'm trying to just do these live and not rehearse. Hopefully between this and a written post I can give a satisfactory answer <laughs> or at least an insightful answer. I think for me a huge issue was growing up I loved to perform, I loved to sing, I loved to dance. I remember my mom saying that I loved auditions simply because it was an opportunity, opportunity for me to go in and perform. And I really did. I loved something about having to go in and become a character. And the performing arts world is different in the sense that a lot of it is a destiny that you can't control. So you have to be good at what you do, you have to train as well as you can train, but then you have to pass the reins over to somebody else. And it's really up to them whether you get to practice what you love to do. So as I moved into my 20s, I realized that it didn't really matter that I loved it and wanted to do it all the time anymore. What mattered was actually getting the job. I really struggled with, with the fact that my destiny, my, the reality of my life was in somebody else's hands. So I think that was a huge reason why I struggled. In, into my 20s. I ended up with an eating disorder, which I spoke about in the last blog post that I did. Because what I wanted to do with my life, it didn't matter how much I loved it. It didn't matter how much I worked at it. What really mattered was whether the person on the other side of the table gave me the job. But I have a second part to this question. To be a really good performer, you, you learn to give of yourself from your heart. And so when you go to meet people after a performance, you go to say hello, you talk with the fans, or so to speak, because um, I have a huge fan base. <sighs> just joking. Um, you start to feel just a little bit fake, feeling like, oh, okay, I was just performing, but now I need to go and say hello. And, and you don't realize when you're young that everybody does that. Everybody kind of puts on a persona. You say hello, you can, you know, protect yourself. And, and all I ever wanted to do after I performed was go home. The last thing I wanted to do was go and say hello to everybody. But then I started thinking, oh my goodness, people are gonna think I'm a snob. People are gonna think, I think highly of myself, so highly that I can't even come and say hello to them. I had been in the business for so long that that kind of pressure on myself was normal. You just had to reach outside yourself and, and do it. But you begin to feel a real divide between who you really are and who you are in the business. I think I lost track of who I really was. Was I the Lalania who said hello to everybody? Um, who? shook hands and was fun to get along with and always had a joke or two or was I the Lilinia who you know was somewhat introverted and wanted to go home and go to sleep because I was tired you know and and I think some performers do allow themselves to do that but when you've grown up in the performing industry you learn to put your own needs second 
I'm, I'm sure people, I'm sure not all young performers are like this, but for myself, I think I had such a need to please and such a desire to get the next job because I loved doing what I was doing that I just learned to deny myself and who I was and what I wanted. And I really lost sight of myself. So stay tuned for the next question, next installment. Please keep reading, sharing, liking, and commenting because this journey to becoming ordinary is not something I can do on my own. We can help each other. That's really what I want my blog and my blog to be, to be a conversation, not a monologue.